Well, this is the bag sort for the Dear Jane Row L bag number two, which is the L7 to L13 blocks. We're going to be working from the Dear Jane book and the little booklet. There's a couple of blocks that are in the booklet because they have modified for the English paper piecing. And I apologize for this glare. So we have L7 is our first block, and I did go through and mark the modified blocks on here. So L7 is not modified. We will be working directly from the book. So I'm going to take my bag and dump it out and see what we got going on here. So big square, not for this. What I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, as usual, I'm going to take it and set some pieces in different groupings. I'm going to make piles of triangles. I've got this triangle here that I will need four of. And actually, it looks like it is this one. I checked the sides because it's the easiest way to go. And I use my stiletto to place it. So I'm going to start in the middle here. And actually, I'm going to set this triangle side. It's easier for me to check as I go. So as I'm sorting through here, I'm going to make sure I pay attention to triangles that are close in size and place them where they need to go. And then, of course, I've got squares. Of, these are bigger. And I will start getting some of these pieces around. You want to make sure that each section is exactly the same size as the next one. Because there are occasions where the blocks are so close in size, but they're really for a different block. So I'm going to start sorting through these and find some of these pieces. We have eight, I believe, yeah, eight triangles that look to be the same size. I haven't checked them. I have another bar here. Those are the only four of these in here. I have all of these bigger squares. I'm not sure if they're the same size. I have four of these little rectangles, which are clearly for this block as well. So I'm going to set these aside, but I have bunches of these little squares as well. I have over in the side, I have piles of triangles and these are piles of diamonds. There's like arrows and straight things here. These are um, trapezoids and other miscellaneous shapes. There's a big square and then there's some rectangles over there. On this si other side I have um, round bits in this pile from some curvy block that's probably coming up. So right now I'm going to focus on the possible pieces for the L7 block because the trick is, is to make sure that it all matches itself. First things first, let's make sure that all of these are the exact same size and they're not. So let's start, let's do this logically. Let's start with the triangles because if they're all the same size, then we don't have to worry about it. But a lot of time they're not. So that's the same as this one, and you want to keep one as the one that you're comparing to. Okay, that's the same as this one. And they may all be the same size. I'm not sure. That'd be nice and convenient. And then I only need four for this square. There's four. So in theory, because four, five of them are the same size, all eight of them should be the same size. But that's not always the case. So we are going to check every single one. All right, and then this is number eight. All right, so all these triangles are the exact same size, so it's not going to matter which four you use. Now, that means that I'm going to set these over here near these other triangles. So these are for my center. Now, I need one for the middle of this. And so now we're going to check the squares. The squares are not the same size. So I've got this one is a little bigger than this one. Okay? 
So I'm going to put the bigger one on underneath here, and I think it's underneath. Yeah, you can't see it off camera. The bigger one is going to go down here, and I'm going to keep the smaller one here. And so then we're going to compare to this one. This one is the same exact size. I'm going to put this to the left. doesn't matter what you do as long as you do something consistent and you know where it is. So I have four of the smaller trying of the smaller excuse me smaller squares I have four of those so that's I'm not going to worry about those those are probably a set for another block so I'm going to set these over here in one pile so I know that those are the same exact size so now I got to deal with one two three four five six of these other blocks so we know I need one so let's make sure that these are the same size all six of these are the same size. So, is it the smaller ones, which is this is one of the smaller ones, and this is one of the bigger ones. We've got six of one size and four of another. So, there's two ways to do this. You can measure it to this, and this looks smaller than, obviously, the drawing. And then this one fits exactly but as we know from the L1 to L6 bag that's not always the case of which one it really is so we're gonna match up the triangles this one it matches this center and should in theory match this triangle so let's line this up and sure enough it matches this triangle so we're gonna go with this center but we can check on this one just in case and that one is a little larger and has lipped over on the edge. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera. But the smaller ones, so you're going to take one square from the set of six that are the same size. Before I do that, I'm going to slide this in here so that I don't have to worry about messing up more of my blocks. Now, I still have not checked the large squares. So I'm going to, I'm going to set those aside. I'm going to set these up here. So I can check the large square. So this I've confirmed as my middle. So I can set that up here. Place a triangle on each end. And then slide that right in there. I'm going to flip it over. Sometimes these pieces get a little bit, I don't know, bowed because of moisture. And I like to flip it over so that the 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 cup effect is down because it touches more of the surface and it doesn't slide as round as much but that's just my personal preference whatever you like to do is completely fine so I'm gonna leave that there and I'm gonna check these larger squares and make sure that all of these larger squares are the same size as well seven eight of them are exactly the same size so it's not going to matter which four that I put on this block two three and four so I will set these on the side over here so I've got a pile of four squares one size another pile of five squares another size and another bigger square in a set of four on the left hand side now that I know all my pieces I'm going to lay this out now I've got all my pieces laid out for my L7 square and I'm going to label each piece L7. All my pieces are now labeled L7 and so I'm going to take my red sharpie and mark my uh, focus fabrics and the focus fabrics are real easy on this one. You've got the outside rectangles as being focus fabric and then the center triangles are as well. So I'm going to dot each one of these with my little red marker here and then I am going to check my fabrics I'm not sure if this is directional or not but because I'm not sure I'm gonna label it I think it might be a lot of times the flowery ones are and even if they're not as a whole fabric when you take it down to these little tiny pieces they may look directional so you have to adjust that way so I am going to mark my focus fabric pieces excuse me as one direction or each one of these 
and my background is sort of directional as well so I'm gonna mark those on the 90 degree just so that and it doesn't really matter because the ones with the the red dot or focus fabric and the ones without the red dot are, are not and I deal with each group based on the fabric so I will take the red dotted ones and separate it for the focus fabric and vice versa so it doesn't really matter which way the arrows are but that does help me distinguish between them so I'm gonna put these in the baggie with my L7 fabrics and then move on to the next block. On to L8. L8 is going to be worked from the book. And so we've got four large rectangles, which I have already separated because that's what I did when I sorted all my pieces. So that's going to be for that because there's nothing else it can be. And then I've got four squares in the corner here and I've got a pack. I got a pile of five squares, a pile of four squares that are large, which are clearly not the right size, and then the smaller four squares, which I'm going to assume, and correctly so, that these are for this block. So I'm going to take my pieces, of course, and put them in place, and then I have to find my um, triangles. There's four triangles. And then there's two arrows and one double arrow. When I look in my pile for my double-ended ones, there's only one clear choice for this. And then you've got two that have a flat end. And the rest of them have, it's a thinner double arrow for another block. So I'm going to set those aside as well. So I've sorted through the triangles, and there's some that are clearly smaller, some that are clearly bigger, and lots that could possibly fit that I haven't measured yet. So I am going to test these on the sides here. So that could be. And so we're going to go through each one of these. Some of these might be too big. Like this one... Maybe if I show it this way. If I put the point here on the edge, it's going to be too long. So you can see how that goes past that line. So those are going to be too big, but they look really close. And so then I'm going to measure to this one. So let's see if I can find only four that match this size triangle. So I found 12 of the same size triangles, which is always concerning to me, but hey, that would be convenient if they would all be the same size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the triangles and make sure that they fit the side of my little arrow thing and they make sense. So I should be able to line this up here and have it line up there, which I can't tell if it does or not. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to find four. Oh, nope, they don't. Slightly off. So we've got multiple sizes in here, which is going to be about a 32nd to a 64th of an inch off. So let's sort those out, because it's got to be exactly flat. These are cut by a laser cutter, so they should match exactly. Okay, this is what I mean right here. You've got to have exactly this lined up and exactly this lined up. So this is the correct sides triangle. These are slightly lower here, and I mean slightly. You may have a hard time seeing it. So, yeah. This one, this one is like these. It's a little tiny stair step right here. And it does matter when you assemble because some of these things can make a difference when you go to size it up. So those are these three are the same size. And it's a matter of finding the ones that line up exactly like this one. So there's two. Okay, so lesson for this block line up your triangles to this point to ensure 
that it latches exactly to this point and this point. I would start by making sure that this is an exact straight line and that this comes to a 45 degree angle. If it is a little bigger or a little smaller, it is not the correct rectangle or the triangle, excuse me. So I have four that fit finally, and I will sit here and lay them out into my L8 diagram. Got all of the L8 pieces placed. So now I'm going to label them with my Sharpie. Got all my pieces labeled L8, and now I'm going to mark the focus fabric. Focus fabric is going to be the X in the center, which is the big double-ended arrow, and then the littler ones, and then each of the large rectangles on the outer edge. Next, I'm going to check for directional fabrics which I probably have a directional fabric. I would not I would call that a directional fabric even though it's not, um, just because the little bits that I'm gonna use are probably gonna end up needing to be a direction. So I will lay that out as such. My background is definitely not directional. So I will label the directional on each one of the red dotted pieces, put it in a baggie, and move on to the L9 block. Now we are up to L9. L9 has got quite a few triangles in it and a collection of five squares. So we did sort squares earlier. So take the set of five out and place them in the middle. I am going to set them up here because I like to work my way in one direction or something. Plus, this way I can access my triangles. Now, these are going to be the same size. I'm not sure if this is going to be the same size. It should be, but may not be. Going to check that. These should be the same size. These, in theory, would be nice to be the same size as these, but they may not be. And these four should be the same size as well. So, we're going to take some triangles and try them in various locations. So I have these other ones I just used from the last section uh, when we were trying to find these middles on L8, and these are all going to be too big for that part, and I think they're going to be too small for the outside. So all the ones in L8 that were really, really close are not going to be part of this block. So I'm going to set them aside completely up here and move forward. So we are going to find the larger triangles for the outer corners. And this looks like a larger triangle. So this is going to be like before, a matter of trial and error. And I'm, instead of just assuming that this matches, I'm going to make sure that these match each other as I place them. One, yes. So these are the outer corners of the L8. So I will put these other two down here. This is going to go with that pile. These are going to go with that pile as well, I believe. No, actually to keep these separate. Okay, so then I got these four little ones. These might be the ones, whoops, these might be the ones for this section right here. So let's test it out there. And sure enough, they fit this drawing. We will check them to each other. And I need to find these. So let's assume one, two, three, four. Let's assume that all four of these are the same size. So that means I need to find 16 of the same size triangles, which let's try this pile. So I'm going to set my, this book is moving quite a bit today. Set my other triangles. These are ones I know that are for this block. And I'm going to go through here and line up. Yep. So. 
one, two, three, four are going to be the same size. This fits. So I'm going to tr compare all the other triangles to this triangle. If I run into issues, it might be because this beginning triangle is not the correct size. But right now I'm going to assume that it is. So we've got one. And I'm going to sort through these and find all 16 triangles. So I managed to find 16 of the same size triangles in that pile. There was four of them that were a little smaller, so those are over here. But out of those uh, 20 triangles, all 16 of them were the same size. So I'm going to go around and place these where they go. So I've got my L9 block all laid out. I'm going to take my fine tip Sharpie and label each one of these L9. Now I've got all my pieces labeled L9. There's quite a few pieces in this block. And then I'm going to mark my uh, focus fabrics. We have the center square is going to be a focus fabric. And then you've got the triangles touching that center square and the points. So you've got these out from the center. And then you've got these triangles here on the outside rim that form the rest of the focus fabric. So this corner and these ones pointing towards the center, these are background, and these ones that are pointing out towards the edge are going to be the focus fabric ones. And then the other ones that are focus fabric are going to be these smaller ones in the corner here. So the four blocks in the center here are going to be background. All the ancillary triangles in this center square section is going to be focus fabric. And the center square itself is going to be focus fabric. So it is a little kind of a little tricky to end up with that shape. But that's how you do that. Then I'm going to check for my directional fabric. And it's a stripe. So it's extremely directional. So... That's going to create a little bit of an issue for me with all of these going in a specific direction. So the easiest way to line up a stripe is on a straight edge, of course. So if I turn this on a 45 degree angle and then mark my directional, I will be able to line up every single piece with the exception of the little, these two right here. These two will be the exception, but everything else I should be able to line up with a straight edge when I go to prep my block. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be in any specific direction. The arrow, I mean. The arrows don't have to be in a specific direction. They just all have to be in the same direction. So whatever you do on one, you have to do on all of them. And the other reason that this is helpful is that you can actually then draw a line next to an edge without having to guess on the actual straight line because sometimes when you put it on a piece it's not quite straight and then when you go to block prep you may be like wait a minute which way was it supposed to be and you may have to double check so let me check that I got all my arrows here I got two here two here two here two here and then all of my ancillary triangles right here oh and see I missed the center square so all of those are directional my background is not directional, so I'm going to bag these up in my bag and move on to the L10 section. Turning the page, we go to L10, and this is a nice little crazy block, and I would say that that would be insane to English paper piece. So, of course, this is a modified block, so you're going to go to your book, and they have simplified it. It has the same feel as the original, just a lot easier to English paper piece. So I'm going to take my jewel middle, and then we've got multiple diamonds going on here. One, two, three, four, five, six of one kind, and I th think these might be the same. They should be. So that means we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, in theory, of the same exact diamonds. And then you've got these little pieces, which I put with my trapezoids. 
which are here. So this should be for these. So let's try to find some diamonds. I know I've got two different kinds of diamonds. I've got these long, narrow ones, which are not going to be the ones for this one. And then I've got the shorter, stubbier ones, which are probably the correct ones. So I will get to placing these where they go, which these are not correct either. So we're going to have some fun sorting these out. So we do have different diamond sizes. So we have what I classify as the stubbier ones, which are these. They fit into these sections here, but they don't fit into this piece here. The angles are not correct and all that fun stuff. So that's not the same diamond. I'm going to put this back to where it was. So then I've got these long skinny ones, which the long skinny ones don't fit either of these pieces. So clearly those are not for this block. We still have other blocks to sort. So I put those all in one pile. And then I have these and they're not quite even. They're kind of like this is longer than this side. And these are the ones, there's four of these. These are the ones that are going to be end up going in these sections here. So these are directional like to each other. Like you can't put, if you flip this over, it's going to be a mirror image and go over here because these sides are different lengths. You can't flip them that way. So make sure that you keep these oriented the correct direction as you assemble your block. So I will place these in their home. Oops, see that's what I mean right there. Um, this is shorter than that. So I'm going to take this and flip it this way and put it in here. And then I will be able to put these pieces in their proper, proper place and then these pieces in their proper place. So this is definitely going to be one that you want to make sure that when you go to lay it out and assemble it after your block prep that you've laid it out the correct way. So that's when directional pieces like this one, if this gets turned 90 degrees, that's not going to fit. If it gets turned 180 degrees or like flipped over, excuse me, then it's not going to fit. 180 degrees is going to fit, but you get the point. So I've got all my pieces for L10 labeled. Now, what I'm going to do here is, of course, I'm going to label them as L10. But because these diamonds are two different diamonds, I'm going to label them A and B. And then I'm going to label my drawing A and B. So this is going to be L10. I'm going to call this one A. It's, it's real ambiguous here. L, 10, B, because that way I know. And because I'm writing in, you know, as it's in position, I'll know that by having this in a, in a readable position when I go to put it on my fabric and assemble it, that it is then oriented the correct direction. I'm still going to label it for directional. I don't know what my fabric is for this block because I don't have it out. So I'm going to label all of these on the side. So there's four A diamonds, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six B diamonds, and the rest of these I'll label L10. I've got all of these labeled, and again, I've got my A diamonds and my B diamonds labeled as well. Now I need to label my focus fabric, and so I'm going to scoot this here and so this is what I'm going to compare to and what I'm going to do because this is a simplified block I am going to assign my in a, like a ring okay so my L10 here is going to be these diamonds A and B as focus fabric. So that means I'll have this little ring here. 
So if I look at this, that would be background, background, and that's background. I'm okay with that. So I think that's the original intent, and I missed one here, right there. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten red dots on my A diamonds and my B diamonds. And again, I don't have my fabric out, so I'm going to label these as directional so that I know which orientation they have. And even if I don't have a directional fabric for this block, this is a really good idea because of the mirror image nature of these diamonds and the fact that they're a little different on each one. So I'm going to label these with these directional and I'm going to put these in a baggie. As I do that, I'm going to scoot these aside and I'm going to put B on the B's, obviously, and then A. So A and B on each one of these diamonds, A and B, and then make sure that I have four A's and six B's on my diagram, and then I will bag these up and move on to the next block. Now we are up to L11. L11 is gonna be worked from the book, and we have one big giant square, which obviously goes in the center of this block. Now we have <clears throat> diamonds and triangles. We've got two different size triangles. So we're going to have four smaller triangles and four larger triangles with eight different diamonds. All right, so I have 10 triangles of the same size, four that are a little larger, and by a little, I mean a little. These are a little larger. You can see the tail here. These are too large for this. So if I stick it here, it goes slightly over the edge. So these fit into the corners. And then I'm going to take the diamonds. And there's eight of these. And these are the leftover diamonds from the other ones. And I wonder if these have the same issue. Yeah. These diamonds have the same direction. I think the same size. Yep, okay. So the diamonds are, the sides are the same. And they're gonna, they're, they're fitting a little smaller than, because these have to be the right pieces. So, the, the square fits exactly. So then therefore the diamonds have to touch this because the diamonds are definitely for this block. The square is definitely for this block. This is not necessarily a definite. So I've got 10 rectangle or 10 triangles on here. So I got four triangles of one size, 10 triangles of another and um, four smaller triangles. So we're gonna place the square, and then we're gonna place the, tr the diamonds to see how this works out, because that makes this triangle larger, which means the triangles, the four that are larger, are gonna be the ones that go here, fascinatingly, which then means whoops, that the triangle that goes here is going to be a smaller triangle. So as long as this ends up being the correct size block, because sometimes the math is a little different in the book than it is on the paper pieces. So you see how that makes an even corner, even though that's not lined up here, that's what you want, you want an even corner. You wanna make sure that the paper pieces are lined up with themselves. So I'm going to take these smaller triangles and fit them. I usually would put this in here first and see these triangles line up exactly to the side of the diamonds. So that's how your corner is going to be assembled. So the, the triangles, the little triangles that you have left, the smallest four triangles, are going to be the ones that go in the corner. 
they are smaller than the drawing, okay? But these are the correct triangles. It's because the math in the book is a little different than the math that is needed to make the paper pieces. So you're gonna place your smaller triangles, then you're gonna place your diamonds, and then you're gonna place your larger triangles, and then you will end up with the correct size square even though it doesn't exactly match the line. And there is that. This is a little off, but you get the point. There. So I'm gonna do this with the other two sides and then I can be ready to mark these up. So now I've got all my pieces laid out and I'm gonna label these as L11. Got all my pieces labeled L11. Now I'm gonna mark my focus fabrics. My focus fabrics are going to be the center square and the diamonds on the outer edge. Six, seven, eight. And then my corners are going to be, all these little triangles in here are going to be background fabric. And I'm gonna mark for directional for various reasons. This is going to make sure that the diamonds end up where they should be in the orientation they should be because the ones with the arrows lining up on the edge only fit in one space and so on. That way you don't have any mirror image issues when you go to block prep and um, assemble. So we've got all up arrows on all dotted fabrics. I will bag this up and place it in a baggie. Um, but I want to check one thing. I want to see how much of a difference there is. Okay, so there's no way of mixing those up. So just wanted to check that real quick and I will put these in a baggie. Now we are up to the L12 block. L12 is also a modified block, so we're going to go into the booklet and get this diagram. They have taken out these little corners and enlarged the center section. So we're going to take, basically you're going to take everything that's not rounded, because I think this is all of the pieces for L13, because everything in L13 is rounded. So the squares... This is the nice part of this is because then you don't have to, to worry too much about whether it's the right part or not because it is. So I'm going to then place my triangles. I think the triangles, yeah, these are all the same size. We've already gone through these for, in order to find the other triangles. We've already gone through these and made sure that these are the correct size. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes because I thought that was an odd number to have. Okay, so we have 10 triangles and we have, should have five of these, one, two, three, four, five, and we do. So I will place these all on their diagram. So I've got my pieces laid out for L12. I will label them as L12, of course. So I got my pieces marked, now I've got a map mark for um, my focus fabric. I have my focus fabric on my big squares here, two, three, and four. And then the lines, I have one, two, three, four, five lines. And then we don't have those little triangles in the corners. So we're just going to focus on the center part and I think that's it because the little triangles are going to be background and that's all we have for focus fabric. For my, excuse me, for my directional markings, I'm going to mark it along the lines of the arrows or the, yeah, the little lines here because it'll be easier to line up if I do have a directional and I can line it up on point for the squares. So I got that all figured out, bag this up, and lay out L13. 
So now we're on to L13. L13 is not a modified block, so I am all done with my booklet. And I have one pile of pieces left. All of my pieces on this block have some kind of curve in them. If you have any pieces that do not have a curve in them, then you either have extra pieces or you missed something along the way. So you'll have to go back and double check that. Now, if you look at this picture, you see right here, you have this really, really narrow um, piece. And if we did this with paper piecing, that would have to be two pieces or changed in some way. And so paper pieces took the liberty of fixing that for us. They brought the radius of this ring in. And what that does is it gives you more material on the outside to work with so you can actually have a good integrity on your piece. And there was no reason to put this in the booklet because it's pretty self-explanatory of a block. So you're going to put your pieces in their section, but they're not going to line up with the book rings, which is completely fine because like in everything else, as long as it fits to itself, then it will work out just fine. So as I lay these out, I'm going to finish this up and then I will be in a position to mark my pieces. Now I've got my pieces laid out for my L13 block. I'm just going to go through and label them where I can. And then I will be ready to finish my markings on each one of these blocks. So I've got all my pieces marked. And now I'm going to mark my focus fabric, which is real simple. There's four pieces. You've got upper and lower and then opposing ring pieces. All of the outer pieces look like background. If you wanted to, you could definitely do these as focus fabric as well. It would change the look, but it would give you that alternating effect. I'm going to leave it like this. Um, so we are all done with this number two bag sort of the L row paper pieces pack. <laughs>